So in this problem, we're told to determine the stopping distances for an automobile with an initial speed of 95 kilometers per hour and a human reaction time of one second. Uh, and then A for acceleration of minus five meters per second squared and then B for minus seven. So the first thing we should do is just uh, draw a diagram to understand what's going on. So we have this car here, this car is moving and then it's traveling at 95 kilometers per hour. So this is how fast it's traveling. And then we know that it's going to be, we're trying to find out when it stops, right? So at some distance, it's going to stop. And uh, it has a human reaction time of one second. And then it's going to like press on the gas and slow down. So after one second, right? So it travels one second. It's going to step on the brakes right here, right? And its acceleration is going to slow down. So it travels one second. And then it's going to accelerate all the way till it slows down, right? So we're trying to find this whole stopping distance here. That's what they're asking us for. So it's going to slow down till the car is here or whatever. And then at this point, it's going to be traveling uh, zero meters per second, right? Because uh, when something stopped, it's not moving. So we're trying to find when it stopped. And at the end, it's going to be zero meters per second. So this is just going to be a rough diagram of what's going on. But let's find what each variable is based on the kinematic equations. So we know V sub zero, which is initial velocity, right? It tells us that uh, it has initial speed of this. So its initial velocity is going to be 95 kilometers per hour. And then what else? Well, we know that it's going to, its final velocity is going to be zero, right? Because we're asking when it stops. So at the end, it's going to be stopped. Its final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. And then time, uh, it's going to be one second for it to stop. You can write time, but it's not necessarily needed in these equations. I'm just going to write the time equals one. And then finally, acceleration. Uh, we're going to have two different variables, right? Acceleration is going to be minus five for the first one. Uh, meters per second squared and the next one's going to be minus seven meters per second squared so we've got these variables but the thing that you might have noticed is that this is in kilometers per hour and these are in meters per second squared right and this is in seconds so what we got to do is convert this number into meters per second so if we have 95 kilometers per hour and we want to convert it we know there's a thousand meters in one kilometer so that would cancel that, and this is, and then we gotta change the hour into seconds. So there is one hour for every 60 minutes, and then one minute for every 60 seconds. So you see that these cancel, this cancels with that, and we're just left with this. So you have 95 uh, times one, or 95 times 1,000 times one over 60 times one over 60. And when you do that, you should get like 26 point something I'm just going to round it to 26.39. And so this is going to be meters per second, right? Because we just changed it. So 26.39 meters per second is going to be our new initial velocity because we had to change it because uh, the units we were given were incorrect or just different. So I'm going to write it up here, 26.39 meters per second. So now we've got it in this form. What we got to do is actually solve. We can actually solve for each one of these. So what we need to, or, well, there's one thing we have to do before that, but basically we're doing this. So we know what we have to do is find this total distance. So the first thing we should do is find this distance here because this distance will be the same for both of these because the acceleration doesn't change until the first second passes, right? So we just got to find the distance here and then these accelerations will change. But this distance here will change based on uh, the acceleration waves. So let's find this distance. So we know it's traveling 26... 0.39 meters a second and how long until it presses the brakes well this is one second long right if it's 20 if it's run or going 26.39 meters per second the number of meters it goes in one second is just going to be this number right if you think about it that way so 26.39 uh, meters so we know that that's this distance so that's going to make it a bit easier so 26.39 meters now we've got to find this distance so we're trying to find delta x for both of these. And so if you look at our equations, we don't know how long this interval is. And all these equations at the top, the top three require you to have the time variable. So we're not going to be using any of those. So the top three we won't use. We're going to be using this bottom one here because we're given all the variables, v sub zero, v, a, and we're trying to find delta x. So let's plug in every, or let's just start plugging in. So we're going to do minus five first. So the gap, if the acceleration is minus five, so V 
which is zero. So we have zero squared, which is just zero, equals uh, v sub zero squared, so 26.39 squared, and then plus two times a, and so we're doing minus five first, so minus five times delta x. So two times minus five is gonna be minus 10, so it's just minus 10 delta x. I'm gonna move the delta x and then minus 10 to the other side, so 10 times delta x equals 26.39 squared. And so we can find it by dividing by 10. So delta x is gonna be equal to 26.39 squared divided by 10. And so if you go ahead and solve this out on your calculator or whatever, you're gonna get it equals 69.637. And so we've got this. Uh, and now what we wanna do is, so this is gonna be meters, right? This is the distance this travels for an acceleration of minus five. And we wanna find this whole distance. So what we need to do is add these two numbers together, right? The distance traveled here plus the distance traveled here. So if you do 26, 0.39 plus this number we just found, you're gonna get equals about 96.02. And then you can round however you want. I don't know how you're told to round, but I'm gonna round to the whole number, so 96 meters. So we're using meters, right? You can tell because uh, this is in meters, everything's in meters. So the answer to the first one, or at least when A is minus five, is gonna be 96 meters. So now we're gonna do for minus uh, seven, so I'm just gonna write right here, 96 meters. Let's do the next one. So it's gonna be the same thing essentially. We gotta find this distance here, but minus seven for acceleration instead. So V we know is zero. So zero squared is zero equals V sub zero, which is 26.39. And then we gotta square it, right? Plus two times our new acceleration. So acceleration changed, it's gonna be minus seven times delta x. So minus seven times two is minus 14. So minus 14 times delta x. I'm gonna move the minus 14 to the other side. So 14 times delta x equals 26.39 squared. And then what you can do is just divide by 14. So delta x is gonna be equal to 26.39 squared divided by 14. And so that means delta x will equal, you plug it in, you're going to get about 49.74. So meters, so this number is this distance here. But we're trying to find the total, right? So this whole distance is stopping from the beginning to the end. So we got to add this distance here, right? This second. So 49.74 plus 26.39. It's going to give you 76.13. And so this is gonna be in meters, right? So 76.13 meters, it's gonna be the total distance between the beginning to the stop. And so I'm gonna round to just the whole number. So it's gonna be about 76 meters. So when the acceleration is minus seven, it's gonna be 76 meters. And so these are gonna be your answers and that's how you solve this problem.